What's up guys? Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about the boosted car. So my main Grand Am here. Uh, I've shown you guys things here and there on it. I've not really gone into the whole car. So what I'm going to give you today is a complete overview, top to bottom, inside, outside, and give you a good picture of what's really going on with this car. So let's check it out. So a little backstory. Um, this is actually the second black tour I've had. Um, this one we had to go down to Georgia to get to bring back. It is rust free. Um, the first one actually rusted out. So this is actually kind of V2 of this whole thing. First time around, you know, I had to really figure out how to put everything together. You know, I had all the parts sitting around as you saw in previous videos a little bit. I never really went into detail back then. So we built it one time, went to put the side skirts on, found the rust, got the new body, and then swapped everything over again. So first let's take a, a good look at what's going on outside. So first glance, you guys notice the SCT body kit. Uh, it's got the whole thing. So the front lip, the side skirts, and your rear piece. Uh, for hood, I went with the SD. It's one of my favorite hoods for these cars. Uh, it's actually the second one I've had. I uh, should have never got rid of the first one, but so we went with that. So for those of you who don't have an SD and never seen one, here's how it actually works. So your two front nostrils are collected and routed over here to where a stock airbox would be. And you could actually modify the stock airbox to actually accept that. Um, and on the passenger side, uh, it's just cut out as like a heat exhaust. Probably not much of a difference. Um, you know, on a hot day of running, put your hand over on the other side when the hood's closed, you could actually feel the heat escaping. So it's actually functional, so that's pretty cool. For spoiler, I chose the RK Sport. Uh, again, you know, one of my favorite looks. Uh, for wheels, uh, I went with Eagle 077s. Uh, the wheels are 17 by 7. I currently run a 245 45 on some mis mismatched tires. I uh, haven't decided what I want to run yet. Good step back, you'll see that uh, it is lowered. Uh, I'm on iBox Sport Springs. The iBox, I went with KYB uh, GR2 struts. I did F-body brakes in the front, as you can see they are powder coated. A quick look at the lights during the daytime. Uh, my headlights, I went black housing, clear corners. Tails, I've got smoked LED ones. I also did the third brake light in LED. So the car is rush free, however, being in Georgia its whole life, some of the paint actually got burnt. Now the look of my car is actually a couple cars from the past, all kind of mashed together. So that's what really kind of helped me decide how to put this car together. Okay, so now that we got a good lit parking lot, let's take a look at our lights at night. So here's the headlights. As you can see, I did LED marker lights and the LED switchback for the turn signals. Uh, headlight, which I'll light up here in a second, is XK Glow. So it's an LED headlight uh, with an RGB function. And then uh, just LED down in to match the headlight. Here's our uh, turn signal function. So I was able to retain the back and forth, and as you can see, it turns orange for turning. Here's our headlights and fog lights on. Pretty good uh, down the road at night. Probably not the greatest for oncoming traffic, but for as little as I drive it. So here's our RGB function lit up. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. So really neat feature all kinds of weird stuff that it does. So here's our tail light. Uh, I chose amber, orange down here just because I like the look of it. Uh, I've got LEDs in here, and regular down there. And here's how reverse looks. So for interior lighting, uh, as you see I've got some glow under there. Nothing crazy, just a seven color. I keep it on like a nice rotation. Uh, it's normally a white light. And then with the flip of the switch, we go to purple. Uh, that switch is wired into the normal light, so it goes off when we shut the trunk. Here's underglow. Uh, with the lit parking lot, it's hard to get the full look of it. Uh, and then what I did up front was uh, kind of backlit the intercooler. But I like to have fun at meets with it. My uh, rainbow mode here is pretty awesome. Honestly, uh, my main color here is just purple. 
so next is our engine bay. So as most of you know, this is a 435 swap. Uh, I actually got the engine through the grapevine uh, from a guy that used to work at Millsy. So they did a few things that actually helped me out. So because it's a full 35 swap, um, you actually need something to help with the fact that the internal crank trigger is different on a 35. On my motor, they actually welded on a 34 crank trigger on a 35 crank. So I'm actually able to put this motor in without almost any modification as far as that goes. Um, so it's hard to see, but I don't have an external crank trigger. However, the upper stuff, I still had to do all the, the wiring differences. So as of right now, it is a stock bottom end. Uh, I did a double roller timing chain. I was able to get a TCE one, uh, brand new in box. And I did a Wotec turbo cam. And to go with that, I did the valve drain. I did some comp springs, uh, longer push rods, all the hardware to go along with it. Um, that all actually came from Wotec brand new. So when this thing was at Millsy, they did what seems to be gasket matching with the port work. And it actually worked out in my favor because I got I got some TC uh, throttle body spacers and it all actually matches all the way down. I didn't have to open anything up any more than it already was. I run stock coils, uh, the ZZP 10.2 millimeter wires. Uh, that was another cool find. I got one of the last sets they sold. Uh, the manifolds are from Millsy. I got them second hand. I went ahead and wrapped them. Kind of keep the uh, engine bay temps down a little bit. Uh, the turbo from what I can tell, so it is a 60 millimeter, uh, it's precision Garrett hybrid, not too sure on the complete info on it, but it's in there, it does the job, and that's where I'm at with it. Got ourselves tile, wastegate, uh, and then an eBay blow off valve that's stuffed down in the fender. So the exhaust, uh, it's two and a half off the turbo, kind of crunched a little bit for the routing because of the six speed, uh, it runs back straight to an SOP muffler. Really good tone, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, the piping is two inch. The mainer, the eBay intercooler. And then up and across and into the uh, throttle body here, which is a TCE 65 millimeter. Which creates, you know, our adapter to get that on there. As far as the intake, it's just a uh, two and a half pipe to uh, plain Jane Spectre air filter. Does the job. You see some general powder coating down here too. Uh, as far as the turbo oiling, so the pan actually came with an AN fitting already on it. So that helped with our drain here. And our feed, uh, I run off one side of the block. And then on the other side, uh, just above the oil filter is another orifice. And I run the oil temp and oil pressure gauges off of that guy. The AC is fully deleted. Um, obviously down here I had to get make room for everything. So all that stuff's gone. Um, up to you, the firewall's all gone. And obviously I got a bypass puller down there. So this six speed swapped. Uh, F40 from a G6. I had to tell, but uh, yeah, it's all underneath this mess. Uh, with that, I got a spec two plus clutch, I believe, is what came with it. Uh, I did a brand new flywheel when I swapped everything over. And so far everything's new now. The new cables, new clutch line. The only thing I couldn't get new was a shifter, but I found a good used one. But now with that, uh, the custom mounts are from Millsy. Uh, they're filled with Delrin. Uh, over on this side, I had a buddy come out and weld on that driver's side mount for me. So you got all that. And to wrap up the mounts, uh, I've got a Wotec cell mount over here. So there's a good amount of vibration, but nothing Nothing too horrible. So that's the engine bay in a nutshell here. Uh, now that I got things together and running good, all is one, now I get to start cleaning up and making it all pretty. Here's the interior of the car. Uh, just like the outside, I want to keep it smooth and just as stock looking as possible without going too overboard with stuff. I was actually able to get 
a set of 30th anniversary seats. Uh, this car was actually cloth, so I swapped the leather along with that. For gauges, I went with Autometer uh, Ultralights. I was able to match those uh, with the custom gauges I got from Black Cat Customs. They're all a silver face. And then behind that is the red LED glow along with the HVAC controls. Uh, as far as the whole stock look, I'd like to point out the whole shifter situation going on here. So this is the G6 shifter that's made uh, to fit underneath the stock GA console with the stock GA uh, boot here. What I did is I modified the shaft of the shifter and I went with this SLP shift knob from an F-body uh, to kind of just, you know, nice sleek look. The colors look good together and it kind of was cool because it goes with the whole fact that I got the SLP exhaust. Uh, for audio, I've always wanted to do an all JL setup and I finally was able to do that. Uh, and the doors, they're four inch. Uh, with 4x6 adapters and the back are 6x9s. Unfortunately, GL Audio does not make a head unit, so I went with this Alpine. Uh, I've always been a Pioneer guy up to this point, and honestly, I should have went Alpine a long time ago. Uh, the interface is great, it's got a lot of adjustability to it, and it's been a great head unit for uh, the price I paid for it. So, our trunk here, not too much going on back here, but We'll talk about it. So the batteries were located. Uh, I did a box that mm -hmm. is track ready. You know, just in case when I do visit that, extended the wires run how they should. Uh, for the audio back here, there's our 300 slash four that's running the interior speakers. Uh, 250 slash one running this 12W3 in a JL ported box. So like I said, I've always wanted the JL setup, so I have it now. As far as the Zex bottle, uh, it is run to the engine bay, uh, ready to go. Uh, my plan is to run a setup for the intercooler, just to spray a shot on there. And of course our mascot here, the chocolate ice cream emoji. So there you have it, a good look at the Boosted Grand Am. Uh, it took many years to get the look that I wanted. Like I said, there's a couple cars I've modeled it from and I've got it exactly where I want it to. So as you see it here is probably how it's gonna be for the rest of time. As far as performance, uh, I plan on eventually getting it dynoed. You know, I'm gonna get on the track, see what it does. I am self-tuning, so it's kind of a learning curve there. So look forward to that. We'll get some actual numbers on this thing and really see what all the hard work, uh, if it'll pay off or not. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.